happen now. And people make me laugh. <laughs> Good evening. Sorry for the delay. Um, the website that we use to go live on is having a lot of trouble tonight. And I could punch it. Um, right. My name's Dave. This is the Mates FC podcast. Um, I'm joined tonight by our welfare manager, who is Welfare. I'd like to introduce Hello, yourself. I'm Andy. I am the uh, Mates FC welfare officer. Uh, and also one of the coaches at Mates FC. I'm also one of the coaches at Football Fitness Club. Nice you sound very you. boastful tonight. <laughs> very boasty. Well, <coughs> why don't you tell us everything else you've got? Uh, we're also joined by a newbie tonight, which is, which is, it's like he's not a human, uh, who is one of our ambassadors, Liam. Uh, he originally uh, was a player for us he is a player for us uh but wanted to get more involved and became one of our ambassadors you want to introduce yourself boy yep hello everyone i'm liam like dave said i am one of the ambassadors now so yeah that's all it is really uh, we've got two comments straight away jamie hall um barwick oh, no. um and then joey hazelton that hair lee so uh right yeah they're enjoying so, the down here uh, Joe, I'll get you back for that one tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, I do need a barber. And Dave, why are you putting the tournament before the barbers are open? I'm not happy. Um, I'll bring hair bands. It's fine. Um, Excellent. Yeah. So this is uh, tonight. This is the Mates FC podcast. Mates FC, for anyone that doesn't know, is a slightly different football team to any other team. Um, our, primary, our primary thing is to get people back into football uh, if mental health has sort of made you lose your passion of football or just took you out of the game. Uh, we don't require commitment. We don't want commitment. We want to just offer you a comfortable return into football uh, on your terms as and when you're ready for it. Um, so we put our games up as events in the events tab on our Facebook page. And if you're free on any of those dates and you want to come and play for us, you just put your name down. Then the week of the event, we get in contact. We make a little uh, message group and get in contact and see if you still fancy it. And if you do fancy it, come along. And if on the day you don't feel up to it, just don't come along. It's no problem at all. We are joined by one other person tonight, which who is, not which is, uh, who is our captain, Captain Danny. Hello, Captain Danny. Hello everyone, how are you? Talking about haircuts. I went for it. Give us a twirl. Nice. Top knot W. Nice. Is that Bowick as I can see? Is mate, hello. Hello mate, all right. I like that tash. Mate. Hey, gringo. I'll wear it. I'll wear it next Saturday. Yeah, nice one. A <laughs> couple of other comments. Cy Bailey, evening, gents. Matt Dyer, evening all. Um, yeah. And uh, right, so what's coming up tonight, Mr. Tallis? All right, so on tonight's show, we have um, coming out of lockdown. So uh, how are you all feeling about it? So start getting your comments on about how you're feeling about coming out of lockdown. How is your fitness going to be? coming out of lockdown have you been keeping up a fitness regime or uh, do you need to get back on it um, and what have you done to get back out and get back into uh, football and get back into your fitness re regime so if you can start posting some bits we'd also like to hear funny stories about grassroots football the things that you can't make up and those memories that you can only have in grassroots local football so if you've got any good ones then please uh, please post them on tonight uh, we had some good stuff last week so hopefully we can build on that um my, my old team have uh, posted a few things so uh, we'll go through those as well um, and then <laughs> it looks like singing <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, I'll bring someone else in uh, right so and then what he's going to say is so the other thing we want to do is basically just have a big old celebration about football so uh, with the imminent return so we're back tomorrow with um, 
football training. So we've got football uh, fitness club, sorry, I'm going to put. Um, and we've also got Mates FC training coming back tomorrow. Um, so with that, just tell us about football. Tell us about your stories. Tell us about what makes, you know, it's these mad stories of like turning up over a park on a Saturday or Sunday and that you've got in at seven in the morning or whatever's happened and you just have the most random funny memories of games you know it just might be something weird happened on pitch um that sort of stuff you know just let us know the funny stories uh that just make grassroots football unique basically but just been joined by another person here mr simon green would you, you want to say hello and tell us who you are Evening all, I'm uh, Simon Green, I'm one of the ambassadors for Mates and one of the coaches at Mates FC. Um, yeah, evening all. Apologies, bit of man flu at the most, so I was saying a bit stuffed up, so I'm all good though, I'm all good. I How will be vetting you before football training tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be fully sanitised, I'm going to come over with like a mask and everything. I'll put you in a diving suit. That's, that's what I'm going to need, that's if I, if I feel like this tomorrow, I'll probably won't go to be honest because uh i do feel a bit rough but no covid mate i don't think it's just more of a cold yeah, hopefully um right so yeah. yeah big old celebration about football so get your get your uh comments in tell us your stories tell us weird stories and uh yeah we'll just start off with liam so liam you're young we've noticed you're young and uh we're not so you're reasonably fresh to this world of uh, local, you know, grassroots football. Um, just, you know, how did you get involved with Mates FC to start with? Um, I don't know. It's all by accident, really. It was just five through talking to you, wasn't it, really? And you said you were starting a team and okay. I just wanted to get involved in a team. So, Yes, yeah, so you travel from, what, Benfleet for mm -hmm. training. And, you know, so we're, we're based in Chelmsford. Ben Fleet's what a good thirty minutes away, um, so you, you know that's, that's amazing. You and uh, you've got another mate that comes down from Ben Fleet as well, um, but yeah, that, that's you know, fantastic that you come down from there. Just got a comment there, sorry, from Sands, uh, Sands United Essex, who we're playing on Saturday. Um, look forward to seeing you on Saturday, gents. So uh, it's going to be a bit colder, but uh, we had originally planned to do like mates versus mates on our first game back, but we had the opportunity to play Sands and they're a great local team. And uh, we're going straight in at the deep end, straight in with uh, a proper match. And, uh, you know, a few things have tried to get in our way. The the ground that we normally use, uh, Vandals, broke the goals. So quite an important thing when it comes to football. So uh, at the last minute, we have managed to find another pitch. Um, so that's gold dust around here at the moment. Um, yeah, so Liam, sorry. Uh, yeah, you've played pretty much in most of the games, apart from when you're going collecting pumpkins, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's my uh, my second hobby, that one. I do pumpkin do collecting. Pumpkin yeah. It's uh, Liam. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, the things you do for love. Um, Liam, absolutely lives and breathes for playing football and he absolutely loves playing with us and for us well, not with us for us um but uh yeah he, he couldn't come to one match and it was because he'd arranged to go pumpkin picking instead which is more important than football can we not get a group for that around like halloween and, and liam can be ambassador yeah pumpkin well, you could be you could be doing your puzzles liam can be Picking pumpkins. <laughs> oh, well, 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 I've forgotten yes, about that. He's got, yes. He's got to mention this week as well. That is great. Have you done many puzzles this week, Danny? Uh, I haven't done any since Christmas. Yeah, I've, um, I, packed, I packed them in a box. Um, some of the boxes I put like into storage and some of the boxes I brought with me. And... Um, Oh, you take this uh, jigsaw very seriously. If you've yeah, so I've, I've brought the, no, I've brought the, I've brought the jigsaws with me, um, thinking I might have a go, but I don't think I'm going to get time, to be honest. Yeah. I might have to miss a game for a, for a day of jigsaws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice jigsaw um, yeah. afternoon with a few beers. That sounds great. 
Right, I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop myself out and just bring Andy back until he stops uh, breaking up again. Here we. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? You're back yep. in the room, mate. I've re yep. I've re 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 uh, fifty p in the meter to four G. Four G. We've gone on four G tonight. Have you not rung Tiskily this over this last week <laughs> and had a go? You're out of order. <laughs> so anyway, how is everyone? Sorry about that. Um, so um, yeah, how's everyone feeling about coming out of lockdown? How's your fitness? Do you know what? I went over, uh... <laughs> well, you went out where, Simon? I popped over to uh, my vet's football to this evening just to get a bit of fresh air. And um, when they train over Bado, the um, and Danny, there was there was probably normally you get maybe a five a side five a side, and it's only it's not a massive pitch over at Bado. I think there were twenty four people over there this evening, Dan, between the two vet sides at Bado. Was that on the grass? On the, no, uh, just on the, you know, like five the 4G, side. one of the tennis courts. Yeah. Um, I haven't been since pre-season. And um, there was two games. I, thought, I can't remember if you were there or not. I think you were injured. That shoulder, uh, shoulder, collarbone thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there were quite a few over there, but that's pre-season, isn't it? So it's a similar sort of thing. I suppose it feels like pre-season. Mate, there was, uh, there was everyone. I've, no, I've got, I, I turned over there. I took the boys over the park and it was a little bit late. So I thought, oh, we'll go over the, um, go over the wreck and say hello. Yeah, 20. It must have been, I think there was four. There was four teams to sell, twenty-four people, and it was like Blimey. only like round robin, yeah, winner stays on kind of thing. But you never get that. It just shows you that people are itching to get out and about and do something, can it? And they, yeah, mm. yeah, 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 definitely. Chelmer Park, Chelmer Park was mobbed tonight with people doing football training. It was everywhere, like it was really mobbed. Uh, we've had some, uh, we've had some comments come in. Uh, Matt Smith, with that ponytail, uh, Roberto Baggio is a poor man's Warner. <laughs> I'll tell that as a compliment. Cheers, Matt. Oh, no, uh, and then uh, Robbo's, Robbo's come oh. out. Com, come on, Dan. We can do a puzzle before the five aside in a couple of weeks. A oh yeah, routine. I haven't uh, announced this yet. I've signed Robbo up for our team. Oh, yes, ringers. Robbo. He's, good lad. Now. he's not a ringer. He's part <laughs> of. The, he's a weekly podcast. Nigel LB, how's Andy's Wi-Fi GoFundMe page going? Very good. <laughs> Did you just say England are conceded? John Stones has just had an absolute mare. No, Who are we playing? Poland. Is that a qualifier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the score? One all now. Harry Kane scored a penalty early doors, and then uh, John Stones has just had an absolute mare try to take on a centre forward at the centre back, and it's just. He's nicked it, passed it across goal, and they've just scored one all. Is it second half, first half? Second half. How Harry, long's left? Harry Kane's looking good for England, isn't he? I mean, anything else, Dad? Half, half, half hour. <laughs> Any tabs? <laughs> no, I think it's half hour left. Yeah. I, uh, I, th I think Harry Kane's looking good. I wonder when a big club's going to come in for him. <clears throat> Was he going to West Ham? Is he? No, he's meant. To... I heard he was going to Man City to replace Aguero. Oh, really? I've heard that. Mm. Right, there's a good debate for you, Dan. You've just raised a good debate. They are having a debate earlier when I was listening to um, um, oh, uh, Talk Sport, and they were saying about Aguero, does he go into the premier all-time great strikers? Yeah. Oh, all day long? Oh, yeah. He's, he's scored probably the most memorable Premier League goal ever. Yeah. Mm. Aguero! He just scored. Whenever you, whenever City play, you kind of like, if they win five 0 when he scored a hat trick, no one thinks, oh, he scored a hat trick. You just think, yeah, he got three. Who, who would just... be your top five, top five Premiership strikers of all time of, of the Premiership? Henri, yeah. Henri, Shearer. Aguero, Shearer, Van Nistelrooy, oh, Rudy, yeah. Rudy, Rudy. I put Suarez in there. Rudy, Rudy. Got five, Suarez, got yeah. Five, so. Brian Dean. Who? Brian Dean, no. What about Burkamp, righty? No, yeah. You've got those. Defoe, Sheringham, Zamora. Stan <laughs> Collymore. Stan Collymore. Ian Wright. Ian Wright. There's, a few, there's been a few, haven't there? Neil Shipperley. Mm. Yeah, Ships. I think oh, the way you've got to do... 
Rob yeah, has put, you don't you don't get a statue if you're not a legend. That's right. Yeah, that's right there, yeah. He has, he's, he's getting a statue, isn't he? Who is Aguero? Yeah, yeah, that's right. The, is uh, he? That's what I've trafford. Is um, there an Alan Shearer one statue? Yeah, there is one at Newcastle. There must there? be one at Newcastle. Yeah. Yeah, we have well, um, bars around it as well, don't they? I was going to say, I was going to say about Bobby Robson, but it's not. We're talking about strikers. Bobby Robson's got a statue at Ipswich and at Newcastle. Yeah, mm. is he? Yeah, I went to um, Newcastle for work and went round the grounds while I was working. Not while I was working, but like after work, took uh, took photos and there's a oh, um, <laughs> and there's a Bobby uh, Robson statue at Newcastle. And then the following Saturday, I took my uh, kids to Ipswich, and um, there's one there as well. Well. Wow. Probably one at Barcelona, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, if back have, to strikers. If we had money at South End, we'd have a Stan Collymore one. He won the other day, didn't you? We yeah. are three points away from safety. The other yeah, one nil. Got about three games in hand, but apart from that, we're flying. And, he, and you've still got to play Cole Yu, yeah? Yeah, and Cole Yu, uh, that would be really good if we can just overtake them and make it full win. Can you imagine uh, knocking them down last game of the season? Oh, it's like that's where dreams are made, isn't it? <laughs> would be good. It'd be good if you do stay up there. It'd be a, like pretty much a miracle, wouldn't it, from the start? Yeah, it, it definitely will be a miracle. There's a guy who's done a YouTube video, um, and he's actually quite good. He's like a fan, and he just said, "Look, it's just unfortunately, I think it's just everything's just too late." You know, we've been promised all this and all that, and we keep talking about the new ground, but it's pointless having a new ground if you're non-league. Yeah. It'll be as empty as Cole used every week. Problem is as well, because you haven't got the money, if you do go down, you're not going to be in that position to sort of spring straight back up either. No. Nah. Yeah. No. Nah. It's a shame, because it, it's quite a good video, but like he shows all the sort of like really good moments we had when we were like League One and, and then like Championship and... And it's quite good, like, but um, but yeah, it's just it's just a shame. I mean, that's that's the that's the reality of football, isn't it? Unless you've got money. Yeah, it's... I remember um, going to watch Palace um, play there back. I don't know when it was. <laughs> yeah, that was when you were a Championship team. Yeah, but then that yeah, happens to loads. Yeah, like you say, Bradford. Do you remember Bradford were in the Prem? Swindon were in the Prem. You know, Sunderland. Look at Sunderland. Sunderland, yeah, and Bolton. Charlton, Bolton. Bolton. Yeah, some big clubs. And yeah. the problem is, is, is if you do that, if you just, like, we've, we've had that, like, you know, got relegated, got relegated, and it looks like we're going to get relegated again. It's like, quite quickly, you can go from actually, you know, we, we were getting really good crowds when we were championship. And I think it's a really good level of football championship. You know? It is, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, good it's a shame. It is good. It's like, um, I always think the championship is like a, the top grassroots um kind of league he's, they're not like they're not Premier League standard but it's more you can go to a game and it could be 5-4 and no one would sort of bat an eyelid it would just be half of the course sort of thing whereas Premier League is it's more I don't know it's a bit more like you look at the players and think oh, like, how do they do that yeah more yeah. intense than in the Premier League yeah, yeah. like um, are we, are we like... uh... sorry Andrew go on mate no I said I, I took a few of my mates to Wembley to watch South End in like a, a LDV, like I think Johnson's paint trophy or whatever. And my mates were like, oh my God, this is so slow and so boring. But it's just what it is, you know, like you've got, it's that kind of style of football. It's not going to be, I said, what do you expect? Like if if they, like my mate was like, oh, that, that guy's really good. He's really pacey, but he can't cross. And I was like, if he was pacey and he could cross, he'd be in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. You've got to take it for what it is. It's like when you watch, like if you're a sub or you're watching another, you go and watch a Sunday league team and that. Um, and you on the sideline, you watch it, you think you think the same thing. Oh, it's so slow. I wish I was out there. Like, it makes such a difference. And then when you do, like if you're a sub, whatever, and you go on, it's so weird because you, you're sort of playing at the same speed. Yeah. It just looks so easy to watch. Yeah. And you think on those big pitches, it slows it right down as well. Yeah. But uh, Nigel LV's put, if you were getting a statue, you wouldn't want the same geezer that did that Ronaldo bronze statue, would you? <laughs> that one that looked absolutely nothing like him. Yeah. What's the one, um, Ant and Deck? Was it Ant and Deck did a, yeah. a wind-up? Was it Beckham? 
Beckham. Oh, James, Corden. Yeah. James Corden. James Corden. That was quality. Yeah, he, was, he, he was really offended, but trying to be really polite about it. Uh, <laughs> Matt Smith put, why don't the Shrimpers re-sign Freddie Eastwood? He could do with a new caravan. Very good. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, I'd love him to come back. He was quality. I remember, I remember his debut, he scored a hat-trick and he was... Like literally, we kicked off, and I think it's one of the fastest goal, goals ever scored. He like we literally we got this new player, and you know when you get a new player, you're like, oh, he literally got the ball, ran down, scored. Everyone, knew, yeah, we'll have him. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have a bit of that. His son actually plays for the youth team, and I think he's out on loan at the minute. But uh, yeah, yeah, but um, is he playing for the youth team because of his dad? I'm not sure, really. I haven't actually seen him. They reckon that he's he's quite good, but um, <laughs> I think this must be Dave has put Michael Jackson's statue at Fulham. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is, isn't there? Yeah, he, he didn't have many appearances, did he, for Fulham? <laughs> but um, Right. Um, also, like, start posting up your funny stories from grassroots, the things that you can't make up. Um I've got I've got a couple of good ones, like a couple of I asked my team today, like my old uh, Sunday team um, that I used to manage. I asked them for a few and uh, I've got a couple. The first one was funny. We we were getting ready for pre-season training and uh, I was like, look, we've got to be fitter than everybody else because last year we were a bit slow out the blocks and then we really started getting going. And then Jamie McKenzie, who's one of the players, was like, I spoke to my dad, who's, who was in the army, and he said he's happy to come over and do some pre-season training. So I went, yeah, yeah, perfect. That's great. That's great. Anyway, he said, right, everyone meet us at Gallywood Common. So we all we all went over to, I think we all like jogged over to Gallywood Common from Chelmer Park. And you know where all the, the big bike ramps are in the woods? And he literally, he got us, split us, split us into two teams. There were logs. They had to carry the logs up these, <laughs> up these slopes, down the slope. Then he had them, like, lying. Uh, you know when you, you lie on the floor and you keep your head up and your legs up? So it's just your abs, like, just completely working. But he just left them there. And then he was like, right, got another lad and got them to walk over their abs. So they had to hold it while these people walked <sighs> over literally an hour we were over there for an hour and everyone was destroyed like literally did proper army is that, training is that when you put your um heels about six inches off the ground and you have to hold it yeah and you hold yeah it. we had we used to have and people, the manager would walk on our stomachs as you you, you basically it was rock hard wasn't it if you're doing it yeah. properly yeah. you can't feel it oh yeah that was nasty and if, you, if you're not doing it properly if you're cheating it you can really feel it so he yeah, was yeah. Like, yeah 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 and, he honestly beasted the boys and they were like, everyone was walking back. And he was like, no, walking, let's jog it back to Chelmer. They were all like, and li literally, and to be fair, I think he came over a couple of times. He then came to the, the field and did some bits as well. But literally, they were the fit fittest they'd ever started off. But it was just the beasting. But the funny yeah. bit was um, it went round the league. There was a rumour going round the league that we'd got an SAS guy in to train us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Middleton has come in. <laughs> yeah, they thought we got Ant Middleton over there training us. But we had um, Dick McKenzie, we, brilliant guy. We had a similar thing with, I don't know if anyone watching has heard of Kev Fuller. He's a proper legend, but he was in the army as well. And he was, um, me and um, my mate Lawrence Spaggett, we played for a team called Ravens. And, um, like I played for Ravens since I, since I was old enough to play men's football, and then we were we were battling it out at the top of the league with a team called Chignall, who were like the complete opposite of us. We were like quite good at football, but we were all like too nice, and um, Chignall were like big sort of naughty boys and everything. But they were they were good as well. And then the last day of the season, they beat us in the title decider, and uh, they come up to me and our keeper, and we're going, "Oh, look, come and play for us next season." And they kept kept like asking us, and in the end, we we both joined their team. First, first pre-season, it was at Melbourne, and it was about 35 degrees. Um, um, I didn't drive at the time, so I had to get a bus from Old Molsham over to, to Melbourne. Turned up, and Kev Fuller was a captain. And he'd just come up, well, not just, but he'd been, he'd been in the army as well. And the uh, first thing he did was just hand us a bin bag. And we're like, that, what's going on? We've got to go around and collecting all the litter or something. And he goes, um, right, he goes, make some holes in that, lads. Chuck it on under your top. 
So I was thinking, right, it's 35 degrees. We're not wearing a top. So I just put, wear the bin bag. And we had to go running around the perimeter of Melbourne, round and round and round. And basically, I don't know if you've ever worn a bin bag, but it makes you sweat like ridic. And um, yeah, we had to do that. It was our first session. I thought I was going to throw up. But the same thing, yeah, we got well fit. We won 20 nil on our first uh, game of the season. It is amazing. Like, if you can get that pre-season bit, it makes a massive difference. Yeah, yeah. But it's just funny, isn't it? Like... Um... Like I say, the boys were just <laughs> ruined for a couple of weeks, and then luckily they got back after the friendlies. They were they were all right. They were up and running. But um, yeah, Melbourne, we had some good games over there. That used to be our home ground, the home the home of football. Never we enjoyed got, playing at Melbourne. One of the lads once uh, we were warming up, and one of the lads ran off and had a wee in a bush. But you know where the houses are, where the where the driveway, and. Uh, like so, as you drive into Melbourne, there's houses that face the park, and he'd gone and had a wee in a bush right opposite one of these houses. So we kicked off, and was that someone's foot? About about a, someone's uh, foot in it. What's where? that? What was all that about? Sorry, and someone right. it was like someone having a beauty therapy on a bed. I could see a foot sticking out on some boudoir. Is that? Is that size foot? It's uh, it's the wee in the bush. And he, he literally, he had, he had a wee in the bush, and then we play, carried on playing the Hashtag. football match. And then this, this lady come marching across the middle of the pitch in the middle of the game. So all the boys were like, "Love, love, we're playing, we're playing." And she went, "I don't care, I don't stop the game, stop the game." And we were all like, "What, what?" She marched up to the referee. And she goes, "One of these players was weeing in the bush opposite my house." It's disgusting. And she had a right ramp for about 10, 20 minutes. And the referee was like, well, I, I, I can't send him off for weeing in the bush. <laughs> and like, she was going, I don't know which one of you it was, but it's disgusting. And I'm going to be complaining. And because obviously I was the manager, all the boys were like, oh, you need to speak to that guy. And I had her for about 20 minutes just having a, and I was going, I'm really sorry. I don't, I don't know. Like, didn't know what to say. I was completely like, uh, yeah, I'm really sorry. Really you should sorry. have said, put it down in writing and I'll, I'll pass it on to the FA and then just screw it up. Yeah, I just said, oh yeah, we're Ken's son if, and, and I'm Richard Murphy. <laughs> you should have done, that would have been brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Liam, have you got any? Fu- sorry, mate. Hmm? Yeah, Anything weird happened to I'll you, Liam? Sorry. Ask Liam. Oh, um, well, to be fair, I never, I never actually played grassroots growing up. I had a bit of a, a weird upbringing in football. Um, I had it a couple of times where I was about to sign for teams and they folded. Um, and then I ended up being a referee instead. Oh, wow. My first game, yeah, my first game got threatened to be sued in, so that weren't, weren't, a, weren't a good start. What, <laughs> you being in someone's bush? <laughs> I wish. That would have been less embarrassing. <laughs> what happened? Um Ah, oh, so I passed a course in about October, November time. So it was quite like quite cold weather. Um, so my first game was first December. Yeah, yeah, first December of that year. So I was I was fifteen, and I thought the pitch was playable. So they gave me like the FA. They gave me a top of the top of the table clash, like first versus second, and the away team were the team in second place. And then this is already... newly qualified ref. Yeah. <laughs> it was mental. I, Deep end. I, yeah, I completely because they um yeah they gave me this top of the table clash. The away team had already convinced me to postpone kickoff by an hour because of the way the ground was. So I was like, right, okay, that's fine. Um, and in the end, I just couldn't postpone it anymore. I was like, look, it's, it either goes ahead now or it doesn't. So the away team had about four four coaches. The goalkeeper was one of the coaches' sons. And you know, like where you do like your your checks, like um, like shoelaces uh, and the studs. I did I did that check. The goalkeeper had about three studs missing, and his <laughs> shoelaces were like wires. And I was like wires. Hey. Yeah, honestly, the they, they no, they just clearly didn't want to play this game. Like it was unbelievable, right? So, um, I said to him like, right, there's no way you're playing in those. Go get. Go get a new pair of boots because the game's got to go ahead. I don't care if you're you're in goal or not. You got you can't can't play in those. So anyway, magically he comes out with these brand new pair of boots. 
So, anyway, game gets going in. Typically, the home side of the top of the league go one nil up in about 30 seconds. I was like, oh, great. That's that's not exactly what I needed. Because um, after the grief I'd already had from the away team, you're sort of thinking, right, I could do with a bit of luck here. Um, and then the next attack, the home team go go attack again. And the goalkeeper dials to the floor. And where they've been complaining about his hard ground, he must have been told, as soon as you go down, scream. Because the scream was horrendous. <laughs> And as soon as he'd done that, I had all four coaches run on the pitch at me saying this game should never have been played. You should never have done it. He's now in tears. We're going to sue you. It's like, I'm 15. I, I can't get sued. <laughs> what happened? Did he, did he get abandoned? I had to abandon it, yeah. Like, as the score was... Because even though the, I'd abandoned it, the score, like, they replay it later on in the season. But I asked never to... Um, Never to ref that team again, because I was like, I'm not having that. Uh, there was a hearing about it, and they wanted me to go sit in the court for it. And I was like, mm, no, really? you're right. Bloody hell. Yeah. yeah it's proper, quite when, it goes to hear, when it goes to hearings, they're proper, like, really strict, aren't they? We had, mm. we had one, um, I won't name the names, the team names, but um, we, same sort, same sort of thing, top of the table clash. This team we were playing who... Uh, um, predominantly like always champions and um yeah we had we were like sort of a newish team we're not new we weren't new players we weren't young but we were a newish team and um we went away to their ground and i've got to, I've got to make sure i don't mention names and uh yeah we i was suspended so i couldn't play but i was watching and we went two nil down and uh it was quite a feisty game anyway and in the second half we came back to two all and basically, one of our players got two footed. He got two footed from one side, two footed from the other side, and then someone tackled him from behind, all at the same time. And it just went off. Everyone was just piled in, and um, like to the point where it wouldn't stop. It just kept going. And while it was all kicking off, their manager had gone to the um, goal, goals and was started un, undoing the nets, taking the nets down. <laughs> like, this is about it's about half hour to go of the game. <laughs> Basically going right. That's it. It's called it off. Because I think the ref, the ref we were meant to have, pulled out about an hour to go before kickoff. Probably so our later. manager, our manager volunteered to ref it, and they said, "Yeah, that's fine." And obviously, because this all, because this all happened, they blamed him. But that went to a hearing, and um, in the end, we I think I can't remember if we got the points or not. We had the next game we played, the home game, we had to have proper linesman um, as well. It was still quite feisty. <laughs> Mm. Uh, yeah, that was weird. So a couple of comments there. We've got Joe, another one of our ambassadors and players, Joey Hazelton. I scored a bike kick against my friend's team in a cup game once. It was so ridiculous. My mate came up to celebrate with me. And then I threw up immediately after and got subbed <laughs> off in the first half. We won 1 0. Why is that? Was he hungover? He just probably got excited. And he's always hungover as well, but he's very excitable. Andy, you've got that Matt Smith one. Yeah, Matt Smith said, I scored after 10 seconds against a team called Dutch in the Sunday afternoon league, and we went on to lose 9-1. Quite memorable. I remember Dutch. That was Jason Mayer's team, wasn't it? Um, Rob Small, who's manager of uh, Bowers Pitsy, he was he was manager of them. I think they were a new team as well, and they just walked the league. Christian's also mentioned Kev Fuller doing some pre-season training at Marconi. When Chip used to be manager, he did yeah. hardcore army training. I think we yeah. did the treble that year. And then he put Melbourne's not very good. <laughs> no, I don't like Melbourne. Um, uh, Simon's uh, Bailey's put, um, I was subbed for Hannikin's farm and pulled my calf muscle running on the pitch. Oh, man. That is so annoying, isn't it? You know, you know Barney, Darren Barnard? Yeah. He got, um, we used to have this, I can't remember his surname, but this ref called Bob. He was quite a young ref at the time and he was a massive unit of a bloke, but he was a legend ref. He was just used to take the mickey out of players while he was refing. And um, same thing, Barney was sub. And as he came on, he did, you know what Barney's like, it's quite like swagger. As he came on, he was dragging his like feet, weird, like dragging his toes as he jogged on, like really cool. But he tripped over and fell flat on his face. And then um, everyone was laughing. And then after the game, Bob, the, man, uh, the ref came in and um, he, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was calling him a dickhead of the week or giving him dickhead of the week. That was quite <laughs> amusing. 
<laughs> Going, I'm just sorry, I keep keep shouting out stories. But um, Matt, talking to Matt Smith, Matt's uncle Martin, oh. Martin Smith, everyone <laughs> knows Martin. We were playing away at Chancellor Park, and um, it's like what Liam was saying. It's really frosty, and we most people just want to play, don't they? they? Don't care about the pitch, just want to play. And obviously, the ref's the one that cares. Um, Martin, we waited ages for Martin to turn up. He turned up about, he kicked off, he was meant to kick off half 10, he turned up about 20 past. He just drove into the car park, we're all standing there with our bags. He drove in, drove around the car park, stopped for about five seconds, opened his window and then just drove off out. He went, nah, it's off. We just got in our cars and went. Nice. <laughs> Didn't even Didn't get out. Did a proper pitch inspection. No. We, had, uh, we had a funny one once, um, that Dave Haynes took the, um, took the kit home and, uh, he took it to his his um, girlfriend, who's now his wife's house, and his um, her mum said, "I'll leave it here, Dave, and I'll wash it for you." So he was like, "Oh, thank you very much," and all that. So the following week, he comes with a kit bag, and like I used to make the boys take it in turns to take the kit. And uh, we walked in. He walked into the changing room, threw the kit bag down, and everyone was like helping themselves to kit. And then they pulled out a pair of his his girlfriend's thong. It must have been caught up in the washing. And, and one of his girlfriends thong was, and we were all like, "Oh, who's is this?" And he was like, "Oh, give it, give it here!" And he quickly, <coughs> hid, it, quickly hid it in his bag. Well, if you know Fletcher, who was our captain, he's uh, he's not one to let things go. So the whole game, he just kept singing that down, ta dang, dang, dang. Got the ball. It was like, it's always yeah, weird when, like, hilarious. you know, like when you see like shoes up a tree or a bra up a tree or something like that um and i never sort of worked out how those things happen but i was walking to tesco's once and i thought oh what's something in my jeans and uh i started like i felt it going further and further down and uh, then it was like where my calf is so i, I kicked it out <laughs> and i looked down and it's a pair of boxer shorts that like they were already in my jeans so I was walking across the road and this like, pair of pants was like hanging out of my jeans. So I had to kick him in the bush at the side of the road. And then I just thought, oh, you know, this is, what if I get arrested? Like, not that I've done anything wrong, but I don't want to discard my underwear. And then I was telling someone the story when I went, got around their house. And they're like, what, they just fell off you? It's like, no, that's already in my jeans. Like, I haven't just done like a magic trick where I can take my boxer shorts off in my jeans. <laughs> Just, because I've got no gusset, just gusset. <laughs> I, I did it. I did a similar thing once. I went to. I went off. I used to uh, go to college in South End, and I used to get the bus there. And um, and I I used to be a bit of a mod, and I had like a the old Harrington jacket, and they had like a a wool kind of lining. And uh, I said to my mum, "Where's my jacket?" And she was like, "I've washed it. It's out the back, and it was still a bit wet." So I quickly threw it in the tumble dryer. And I quickly grabbed it, ran off to college, and I was waiting at the bus stop. And there was, a, uh, as I was walking up to the bus stop, there was a girl there, and she like looked at me, and I was like, "I oh, must be, must be looking pretty good today." Like she's proper staring at me. I was like, oh, I got, I did. Got, "Got on the bus, got on the bus, and uh, went went to college." And anyway, I got off the bus, and I was walking to college, and I was walking past people, and they were proper like looking at me, and I was thinking, oh, "I must look, I must look quite sharp today. I must like, I must have had a good day." And I'm walking in, and then just before I got to college, I'd walked all the way down South End High Street. I looked in uh, a shop window just to sort of check myself out, and I was like, "What's that?" And a pair of my mum's tights were hanging out the back. Ah! Of the <laughs> oh my god! Like, you know, like when uh, you know when you tumble dry something, whoa, it goes really static. And it obviously these tights had got static. I quickly pulled my jacket on, and they were like hanging out the back. So that's why everyone was staring at me, not because I was hot, just because I had a pair of old ladies' tights hanging out. The <laughs> I had some on my head once at this. I was in this pub in Nottingham, and an old lady come up and like she was on a hen do, and she took her tights off and just put them over my head and face, like um like a balaclava. It was like a dare. I, like, I nearly got gassed. Um, <laughs> Right, Matt Smith, I'm probably the only person to be booked by both my uncle Sunday afternoon <laughs> and my dad Sunday morning in the same day. Oh, oh, how funny is that? Uh, Dave Leslie, as uh, we just mentioned earlier about washing the kit, uh, says, Lisa says thanks. 
<laughs> Sorry, Lisa. Sorry, I had to share that story. Dave reminded me of it. If it's a so. Uh... What colour are they? Stop that it. Well, the kit we used to play. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the kit. <laughs> Go and do a puzzle. Um, I do one, one, like, one little comedy. One little comedy. Oh, sorry. Like, someone's done a goal. Yeah. England two one up. Who scored? Who scored? Uh, yeah, one they... of the England players. Oh, Maguire. <laughs> two one. Maguire. Well, is that Thanks, late? Robbo. Well done. Thanks, Si. Two it's one, probably yes. um, nearly the end, isn't it? If that was second Must half be. earlier. Half hour ago. Um, mm. Do you remember, you know, uh, uh, Snell, he's played a couple of times. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. He, uh, he used to play in my team and he was great. Really Bad good team. player. Great striker. And... Uh, we played once on that really far away pitch at Melbourne, the one that was almost by the church at Melbourne, right in the far corner. And uh, we were playing and there were some kids behind the fence and they were like shouting the whole game and everything like that. And Snell, Snell scored a goal and he like scored and he ran out, ran off like a premiership celebration and slid on his knees, you know, like Thierry on style in front of these kids and went, like that. And they all went, Whoa! Whoa! and it was like, it was the funniest thing ever. Even the ref was like laughing his head off because he just ran off, slid on his knees, and these kids were like, Whoa! and that's also like not what Snell's like. Yeah, it was, it was very funny. Very funny. I've got this hey. weird thing where I can't celebrate. Like, we were talking about it earlier. If I won a million quid, I'd just be like, oh, cool. Like, I'd love it. Don't get me wrong. But I wouldn't be able to do like a, a fist pump or like a whoop <laughs> or anything like that. Or like if like we won a league or something like that, I'd be happy. But I, I can't physically show like, but in normal life I can. I just can't do it for celebrations. And like mate was saying, well, what if, what if like the, we had the Sunday league team up and running and what if we won and we all come over and I'd just be like, I'd just stand there and cry. But I can't like, I can't get, like I can get excited, but I can't physically show it. We was watching an England game around mine once and it was one of those ones that was on in the day. I think it was World Cup a few years ago. And uh, we're sitting there watching it and then someone just, my mate jumped up, ran to my window and just shouted out of the window. And I just sat there like, cool, it's really awkward. But yeah, I just can't do it. Oh, no, I'll be terrible. Nigel LV, I am terrible at surprise parties. I'm, um, I can't even accept a card from people. It just breaks me. It's really weird. It's celebrating like your kryptonite then. It absolutely is. My People being nice to me or doing things for me is my kryptonite. If someone, like I'd happily take anyone down a pub all night, anything like that. If someone bought me a packet of crisps, I'd feel like the most awkward person in the world. Right, I don't, you know, no I don't know what to do next time we go to the pub then. I think I'm quite mumsy and I feel like I should well, be... you're multi everything. What's that? I said next time we go to the pub, I'm going to buy you a, like one of every every crisp and every nut. I'd buy you 20 nuts. <laughs> um, right, start posting, <laughs> your, uh, start posting your best goals ever on, uh, on, on the uh, Facebook page. Uh, I'm still going with Diana Ross at the uh, America World Cup. Still not goal. Pierce's goal time. If you haven't seen Pierce's goal, make sure you check it out. I've put on uh, probably one of the greatest goals you'll ever see. Oh, we're playing Sands, aren't we? Yeah, exactly what I was going to say, Dan. Uh, Sands are the ones that have got the, you know, there's this great um, video, te video technology. Um, and Sands have got the camera. And uh, it's something we've looked into. <laughs> But yeah, they've got the camera. So this Saturday coming up, it's just, it's just gonna be like, playing for us. This is your chance to show. Sometimes it's going to be like shooting from the halfway line and stuff. It's going to be the most greediest game ever. <laughs> you, you, you are. You'll just keep kicking them over in the bushes. You've cost us so many balls. Because you're so powerful. <laughs> so, Andy, was that, that, uh, that video of Piers in the group chat, is that a goal or did someone save that shot? That is the goal. That is the goal. It is. Honestly, it is something else. Two minutes 18, Liam. Two minutes oh, 18. Make sure, get on it. 
Two minutes eighteen that change your life. It's uh, yeah, it is definitely, definitely. A, a, you know, it was just the whole, whole, the whole thing. It, even even the corner was quite good, wasn't it, Dan? Well, yeah. I don't want to say anything. I get I scored a penalty straight after, but I don't even know what minute it is. But no one's really sort of mentioned that. Um, did you score in that game? Talking about yeah, I did after. Never mind. Um, Good goals again, Wales. Did you see Wales go last night? No, I missed it. Is it last night? Good. Yeah, really good goal. Short, shortest bloke on the pitch got a header. Dan James. Oh, I did see that. It was great. Yeah, that was really Gareth good. Ba- goal. Gareth Bale, Cro- yeah, Crowley. Um, can't think of any any newer goals. Newer goals. Great goals. What were the goals like tonight? Post it on. The England goals, if you were watching the game. Didn't Sai say Keynes was a penalty? I think so. Was uh, What was Maguire? Nice Probably a header, header. header from a corner. Got to be, isn't Probably. it? Imagine, imagine if he just hit it from the halfway line. Screamer. Like David Beckham-esque. And we missed it. Well, that's, that's basically... We're going to see a load of that on Saturday against Sands, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got mum. Poor old Sands boys. They're probably watching, thinking, "What are you talking about?" Like, as if we're going to score a hatful. <laughs> Obviously, we're not going to score. They <laughs> score more than us. <laughs> yeah, well, now you've all got a lot of pent up um, oomph in you, haven't you? So, uh, I think it's going to go one. I think one option. It was scenario one is we're going to get out there and everyone's going to break within minutes because <laughs> no one's moved for so long uh, and just getting in with far too much effort. Uh, yeah, I think actually that's probably what's going to happen. But yeah, we're doing uh, we're doing some more warm ups as well. So anyone that comes to play for us, we've had this traditional thing that we get on the pitch, try and do a little bit of a warm up as quickly as we can. But because like pitch time pushed for time and that, uh, we changed it a little bit. So when you come and pick your kit, kit up at the meeting point, which is normally the car park of where we where we're uh, playing. Um, we'll have a 15-minute warm-up there prior to going on the pitch uh, just to get everyone a little bit warmed up before we get out there rather than breaking you straight away. I've, um, I've uploaded... I'll be dressed as Mr. Uh, Rotator and uh, <laughs> Mr. Rotator. Right. I can arrange that if you want. Do you want me in Lycra? I'll put it to um, the um, messages, I think. Put it okay. to the vote. Yeah. We, if you want me in Lycra, I'll be in Lycra. Lycra. Post now. Thumbs up, thumbs down for Dave in Lycra. We could both do it, Andy. Um, uh, Matt Smith. In, in the same suit? Warm up. What was that? Matt Smith. Red Bull and a fag is a warm up. <laughs> uh, I've, put some, I've put some goals on for Matt Smith, so... I've put the uh, Freddie Eagles South End ones. debut hat trick. Um, I've also put the Freddie Eastwood against Man United. What a goal. What a goal. And I've also, just for Dan, I've put a little Stan Collymore against Millwall. I'm what for South End? South End, yeah. Is that when he had the tash? No, he didn't have a tash then. He was uh, like. Nigel LV, Lycra and a bum bag for the oranges. I can... Uh, when we say oranges, are we talking about the fruit or my fruit? <laughs> uh, I invented something for bum bag. Um, being a rather fat man, what I thought would be good is if you get a bum bag and then cut the back out and sew it onto the, a T-shirt that you're wearing and cut the T-shirt out so your belly goes into the, uh, into the bum bag and then you look like a thin man with quite a heavy bum bag. <laughs> and I think that might be good for maternity wear as well. Women can just pretend that they're thin but have a big fanny pack. N- Nigel LV's just confirmed the fruit. Lovely. And then Simon's put ease with Matt Smith on the warm up. So, oh, we're getting really? some likes. Oh, no, there was a, a coffee in a fag, was called an old whore's diet, wasn't it? <laughs> or well, a horse breakfast that's it <laughs> I used to love a coffee in a fag say no more um, Marlene 
uh, Christians put a campaign to bring back half-time oranges well funny funny is you should say that because when nigel lv just said about the oranges i just thought when do i get to cut up oranges for everyone mate that's the you can't do it at the moment can you because of covid but that is the best that is so nice a half-time orange why my oranges got covid well i don't think you can are you gonna um, what you could do is put you could wrap up in foil half a half an orange per person and put them in their own bag in a kit bag. I could, uh, I could cut them up with a chocolate orange. You could have a chocolate orange. Oh instead. yeah. Oh, chocolate orange. Oh, don't oh, you're talking. Um, what was I going to say about orange? Like five a day. I might throw yeah, five just chocolate just oranges a day. <laughs> Do you know what Silver Black used to eat? Well, Are we still we're live? Remember? <laughs> um, Silver Black used to she. <laughs> Because when she was poor and lived in Liverpool, um, a treat for her was to um, to peel an orange and then roll it in a broken uh, in a crumbled oxo um, thing, and she'd roll it in that, and it would. She used to call it a silla daiquiri, and she'd eat that. And uh, her and Paul O'Grady were at the Ivy one day talking about it, and uh, she got them to bring out some some <laughs> like a chicken oxo. And uh, an orange, so she could have a, si a silla daiquiri. Maybe we could celebrate with those. Sometimes an orange? Like for kids. Yeah. So, um, kids. hope work for everyone. If uh, by next week, or maybe we do it live next week, we uh, eat a orange rolled in a chicken. Well, like, so, it's like um, a like batter, um, an oxo batter. Yeah. Around a, I'm up for that. Give it a go. I, don't, I can't imagine it tastes nice. No, if it's all right for silla. Little pre match. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like sweet and sour, isn't it? It's like hmm. probably quite nice. I'll um I'll pop a few in my I'll wear some I wear some uh gloves. I'll pop them in your bum bag. In my fanny pack ready for uh every time someone scores a goal, they can have a steal <laughs> of daiquiri from my fanny pack. Rob Robbo's put like a naughty like kangaroo. Gravy that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Oh. Um, Nigel LV said, "When do they? When did they stop giving oranges at half time?" Am I um, when people to... started eating bats, <laughs> <laughs> they, they give like a, a lot of the a lot of the games. Like I, I've managed a, a youth team, and they they give Haribo at half time. Yeah, sweets, that. sweets at lunchtime. Uh, sweets at lunchtime. Got, half time. I've got a sweets uh, table in my new house here because I'm not fat enough. So. Oh dear. It's like Willy Wonka's round yours. It is. That'll explain all the little orange men. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I'm just watching. And the rivers of chocolate. It's brilliant. So if you want a daiquiri, I could bring a, a kit so you could make your own, which is an Oxo cube and an orange. <laughs> It'd be just like when people order things from like Gusto. Is it called Gusto? Yeah, yeah Gusto. You know when it's like, oh, this is a packet of cornflakes and here's some milk because you can't go in a shop and do it yourself. Um, <laughs> that. There are other Sounds fresh right. food companies out there. <laughs> the great, we can call it the Great British Mates Off. Yeah, Richard let's do Murphy. It. Richard Murphy's just waved. We're missing, we're missing Rich's uh, updates, football updates tonight. Is he not in the green room? No, he's uh, he's had his jab today. And he's, uh, oh, is that why he's feeling a bit groggy? A little rest. I'm going to pop around there later and ram an oxo cube down his throat and a uh, little <laughs> squirt of citrus. It'll be all right. <laughs> but he can't wait. <laughs> he's buzzing. What, so, is, what is the strangest pe thing that people have had at half time? There you go. My my um, my old dear used to do the oranges, even like to a point about three years ago, she'd bring them in a tub. She got this orange tub, and um, she used to put them on the pitch like uh, like Pac Man, didn't she? Yeah, like reverse Pac Man. And when she could make <laughs> it, like a tennis she, ball machine. When she could make it, she used to give them to my old man to bring over to football. And Kev Wallace called called him the man from Del Monte every week. 
What about, uh, did you have any superstitions when you used to play? Like, Only my lucky pants. I think we've, we've, we've already touched on that. That are at Barcelona now. Yeah. yeah. Made it. They made it. Do you, um, so do you want Haribo or something? Tell me what you want as an alternative to an orange and uh, I'll, uh, I'll treat you. Nando's. Yeah. At lunch at, at lunchtime. Half time. <laughs> half time. <laughs> <laughs> Cheeky half time Nando's. You can have a little thigh, couldn't you? A little dominoes. We might be a bit sluggish second half. I tell you what, if you had I made some uh, what are they called chocolate whiteies, is that what they're called? The opposite of brownies. I've not heard about that. White chocolate brownie. Yeah, yeah. Is it called a whitey? Anyway, I made that today, honestly like a brick. I just <laughs> <laughs> it tasted nice and the middle was fine, but it was so heavy. Simon Bailey's put jelly babies all the way. Oh, okay. Mm. Matt, Matt Smith uh, would like a, oh no, Rich Murphy would like uh, Matt Smith and a cigar at half time take some bit. Oh yeah, uh, I thought that was a request. He wanted Matt Smith and a cigar at half time, uh, but it was Matt smoking a cigar at half time. Um, then we got one from Matt Smith. We had orange breezes at half time last game of, of one season at Charrington Sports. Ah, similar. Oh uh, dear. I remember having a Red Bull once at half time and literally I had to sub myself off in the second half. You do what? I had um, a Red Bull at half time once and literally it sent me crazy. I, had I to thought you said you had to tug yourself off. I had to take <laughs> myself off the pitch. It's not much better. So all that pent up energy. Yeah. Oh, you're not having any of that. <laughs> It's not very welfare. Don't do that over uh, Melbourne, will you, by the houses? Yeah. Don't do that would be nice 4G. You saying uh, about Martin Smith, Dan, he uh, he sent one of my players off once for going and getting a, a, a drink because it was an unauthorised break because he walked off the field of play to get a drink. It was really hot and he just went to get a drink and he went, uh, uh, what do you think you're doing? And he went, I'm just getting a drink. And he went, yellow card. And then he realised he booked him red card. For getting a drink <laughs> for rehydration, and every time, every time I must he admit, ref... Um, ref, and I was in goal. It, um, he used to, uh, I, I he used to go six seconds like that, and I'd be like, I've literally just picked the ball up. Like, so I every time we had him as ref, I used to go one, two, <laughs> and count like really loud. Oh, uh, yeah, funny. Funny days. Uh, right, Matt Smith's put, I won't let you down this weekend. Still uh, smoking my cigarellos. Is that what they're called? Yeah, it's, um, you know, when they banned those mint, like, were they? Those um, minty cigarettes that people smoked. Um, mint they banned those, mentals. but they didn't ban cigarellos, which is like small cigars that women used to smoke in the 1930s. <laughs> Um, so now they just smoke those because they've got menthol in instead now um, until the government bans those. And Does he have one of those plastic tube things they used to use as well? Yeah, it's basically like a... And he has one of those fluffy scarves. An art deco that. woman, uh, yeah, from... Hat, one of those tight hats. Don't they do... I thought they now do uh, cigarettes... I sound like an old man. Don't they now do those um, cigarettes with the plastic ball and you pop it if you want menthol? Um, no, that was a little button. Like you used That's to squeeze banned, the filter and it used to pop and then it'd be a mental cigarette. I've yeah, not shot sure the the on that for years. Oh, they got banned as well? I think so, yeah, because I think, yeah, because they count as mental for some reason just because they're button. What's the, what's the problem with mental? Well, they're banned, though. Sterling so clicks, I'm a baby So you can't have mental cigarettes anymore? No, you have to have a cigarello. They got banned, like, before the summer. Why did they get banned? Um, I think that was attracting people to smoke. I used to like them. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fact, they did taste nice. So they yeah, make them nice. disgusting. It puts people up. Next week, all of us popping a pipe in our mouth. Oh, do you know what? Do you know what? My, when I smell a pipe, it reminds me of my dad because he used to take me fishing inside Bailey or like this. He used to take me fishing and he used to sit there and then he used to go and light the old pipe up. So whenever I smell that pipe tobacco, 
it reminds me of fishing with my old man. Right, no joke. Just... No Go joke. On, I was going to buy a pipe because my same sort of thing. My granddad used to smoke a pipe when um, we'd gone our summer holiday. My nan would pick us up and we'd get in the car and you could, it was amazing, the smell. And um, like recently, I thought about buying a pipe just to, just to like, I don't even smoke, but just to smoke it, just to smell for that smell. I can remember oh. the smell now. It's an amazing smell. Yeah. My dad used to clean his pipe out um, <laughs> <laughs> on the kitchen, <laughs> on the kitchen worktop, and uh, I just always remember like there'd be like like it's, I'd go to like butter some toast, and there'd be tobacco in it and stuff like that. Where the uh, butter? Yeah, because it'd just be like it'd just do it on the worktop, and I'd just put the Is this toast. another another um, influence from Scylla. Yeah, <laughs> I was wrapping, yeah, wrapping my toast up in the tobacco. I forgot the word there. I was side, ba side Bailey's uh, per, not football related, but I stopped on the hundred mile uh, Prudential bike ride to have a cigarette and got some terrible looks. <laughs> I think if you're riding a hundred miles, you can do what you want. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, it size also put they were called Sterling Clicks. Those with a menthol. Hmm. See, I wasn't making it up. I've never heard of them. Well, it's because we don't smoke. Yeah, probably. And you know how much fags are nowadays? Can't I'm going to guess. 20, 20 B&H, 11.50. Hmm. That's that right? I don't Ooh. know. I think they are, oh. they're over a tenner. No way. Yeah. I remember buying my first packet, 10 B&H, and I went in the shop Tuppence. and I wasn't old enough. And I went, can I have 10 B&H? And, and she went, yeah. And I went, oh, can I have another 10? <laughs> so I bought, I bought 20, but in two 10 packets, because she let me have the first one. I thought, I'm on a roll here. So I went, can I have another 10? Stock up. And they were 99p for a pack of 10 cigarettes. Oh, yeah. When oh. I was a boy. Oh, yeah. Sovereign six-pack. Nice one now, Joel V. Uh, right. <laughs> Simon Bailey, bang on, Captain Forlan. Eleven fifty. Uh, how's that been Is happening? Really? Uh, how's, that, that? how's that been going all week? Oh, um, yeah, all right. I put the I put the profile picture, didn't I, on the temporary profile, and then um, who was it? Someone else made. Oh, someone. That oh, was Ben, wasn't it? On the one of the groups, put a comment. But other than that, it's been pretty quiet. I've had a, a banter-free week. Huh. Uh, Cy Bailey, average 20 pack is £11. Matt Smith, 20 of my menthol cigarellos is 9 to £10. Wow. So Sorry, much, isn't it? So, uh, right, anyone playing for us, if you can let us know what you'd like at halftime instead of an orange um, and uh, not fags either because uh, they're too expensive. But you can have Haribo and stuff. If you say if someone smokes 60 a day, that's like yeah. 33 a quid a week. month. A week? Yeah. 33 quid a month. A day. 33 quid a, a day. day. I'm tired. I've been working hard today. I'm knackered. 60 a day? Yeah. <laughs> I got it's a D in that. 60 a day. Christian's a lot of people do that. Pizza. That's like, seven, and, if that, in a working day of eight hours, that's seven and a half fags an hour. Yeah, people 60 a day, people 40 a day. People used to smoke 60 a day, didn't they? Bloody hell. Oh, pizza. Yeah, we can do pizza. Oh, we used to go, we used to play a team in Basildon and they used to get pizza after the game. Because that's the beauty of Vets football, right? You get, um, the home team has to put on food for the away team oh. every every single game. And then you get your favourite grounds to go to. Some some of them do like boring cheese sandwiches. At Bado, we do, we've got, a, he's not, he's a linesman, he's a player. But he's predominantly a linesman, but he's also the chef, so he cooks in and we does a chili or a curry after the game. Mm, nice. Jelly yeah. beans, jelly babies seem to be uh, um, key. yeah, they give you, yeah. give you energy, don't, don't like they? Jelly, jelly I don't like jelly babies, I don't like consistency. They give you, um, they give you energy as well, and Harry Bows, fizzy Harry Bows. Oh, I've got some proper fizzy fish here. Are we, still, are we still talking about sweets? You sure you don't want to steal a daiquiri? I do, I do now. You've talked me into it. Do you take all the white stuff off? The piff? Hey, all the white stuff on. Yeah, piff. Yeah. We're taking the piff. Off, you? you know how to don't, get that off, don't you? Don't I hate all that. that. If you roll your orange, 
People haven't played for a while, so Ventolin at half time, maybe. <laughs> yeah. You roll your orange and uh, then the peel it and push it, put a bit of pressure on it when you roll it. And when you peel it, all the white comes off. Oh, Nigel uh, LV's with me. Same as Andy. I don't like jelly babies. They've got a strange texture. I suppose it's that they're sort like of hard flowers. on the outside. And then, oh, no, they're weird. It's, um, I think for me, it's the sugar. I don't really like how they're coated in sugar. Yeah, it's like, like powdery. Powdery stuff, powdery. It feels horrible. It's like when you get a cheap donut, they're like that. Oh, I hate that. They've got that yeah. powdery shit. Oh, like, the, the ones at, um, at Adventure Island. Those donuts are them. Sickly. Oh, they're the bomb, then. Yeah. Um, right. You flip over. Yeah. Mr. The Robinson, machine. crumpets with Marmite and cheese. I've never had a topping on a crumpet. Is that melted cheese? Or do you just put the cheese on a hot crumpet and it melts itself? I don't know. No, I was asking, oh, I was asking Liam, him. Ty <laughs> Bailey says, get Liam a Barney Bear. Is that that spam face bear? Yeah. yeah oh, no, I'll, Barney I'll Bear's the little um, cake bar, isn't it? Oh, Barney's, yeah. Yeah, the my children, kids are there. Yeah. What about what are the ones from Piggy? Oh, Percy Pig, I'm thinking of. From Mark Suspensers. Yeah, they're fizzy towels are nice. Um, right. Is there anything that people are currently having instead of oranges at the moment in the football world? I think it is just jelly babies, isn't it? And I bought, like, gels. One of the main reasons gels. getting into football was I wanted to bring a big plate of, uh, like a big silver serving tray of oranges around with me. Um, love to, love to see that. Mailed that. Or like, you know what they have in the cinema in the 50s? Uh, when they sell ice cream from those trays around the oh, net. Yeah, yeah. That could be me on roller skates with jelly babies. And a bum bag. With boobs. Yeah. Where's, has Andy had a power cut? Um, he's gone for a silly daiquiri <laughs> and a Red Bull. Some homemade Levi Roots energy bars. Mm. They sound amazing. Oh, really? You live in a very exotic world there. They do sound amazing. Is that like jerk? Or just in the sauce? Energy energy bars or balls? Bars. Oats. Oats gelled together with Levi Root sauce. Does oats and spice go together? <laughs> well, who knows? I didn't think oxo we'll and oranges would go together. What we could do is at half time we'll do you can you can have a silla daiquiri or you can have a you can have you can have, um, oh, shit, what are they called? A tracker bar with some <laughs> Levi sauce on it. I'll tell you what, if Joey Hazelton's playing and he has that, he's definitely going to throw up if he scores. Or it if he don't like score. That excitement. Crumpets with Marmite and cheese. Mm. Sorry, my phone overheated. I've never had that before. It's Statistically a, for you. Phone is dangerously it's warm. It's cause you're, yeah, it's because it's working so hard to keep your connection. It's working so hard for your personality. Harsh. Oh, Energy bars. You can post the recipe in the players page. Simon Bailey, thank you very much. Joey so, Hayes. Sorry, I missed that. Music. What was that? Uh, Simon <laughs> Bailey is going uh, He said the Energy Bars, and he'll post the recipe on the players page. And Joey Hazelton's just been sick. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Christian said about buffet? Oh, I could do a buffet. Uh, don't Ooh, start to, not, not, buffet. not with Robbo on there. Robbo will be all over that. Oh, Robbo right. can have take, a bit. Do, take, oh, a tip, take a tip from a fat guy on a buffet at wedding. Don't pick up a plate. Because you know you always get that guilt bit where you think, oh, my plate's got too much stuff on. Don't take a plate. Walk down the buffet thing, just grazing. Eat it. Just eat and it. Then, and then get your plate. Mm. And then no, you think, oh, oh, you're not having much. No, I'm not really that hungry. But you've eaten half of the buffet. That's a uh, buffet tactics. Because the thing is, when you're, when you're built like me, you can't be the first up at a buffet because oh, no. everyone goes, "Oh, look who's at the buffet." But then, if you get one, if you get one sandwich, everyone's like, hmm, "As if you're going to eat one sandwich." Um, yeah. So, Christian, uh, if you'd like, I can support. I can sort out a prawn ring for you or a beef reef. That they do from um, Iceland. Yeah, they brought out at Christmas. It was a beef reef. Tony it Carberry. Cool. It was basically beef in a circle. Oh, Toby, I'm not a fan of Toby Carberry. Don't get it. I don't get the big excitement. Just someone makes your roast dinner and you ain't got to do it yourself. 
If it's dry by the time you get home. Oh, you, yeah, you're in the, yeah, you're there. Can't eat in. No, is your V is interested in my beef reef. Um, <laughs> I love a buffet because it's the only time you get to a buffet at a funeral or something like that. It's the only time you really get to have an egg sandwich. Right. I don't bother making yeah, my sandwich. I like an egg sandwich. Mm. Homemade egg sandwiches oh. are the best because the egg's still warm. Mm. Oh. It's like a cook uh, program now, isn't it? No. Do we, well, what we could do is each each week we could do a different um, halftime snack, a COVID-free ho- home um, pre-packed uh, snack, uh, and we can offer we can offer the team an option each week of what they'd like. Nigel LV's per no, I never get the guilt. I have no shame. Three times reload. Like it. But that's the beauty of a buffet, isn't it? It's only when you're in Sharm El Sheikh at the Hilton that really? you sort of you have a shepherd's pie and then put a bit of pizza on top of it and have a pork chop at the same time on the same plate because you can. <laughs> buffet, all these tactics of buffets. Let's go to buffet, avoid like the the vegetable, sh- no, not vegetable salad. You lot are talking like reload. It's not Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you just. Haven't lived and it, like because they're all the same, aren't they? Buffets, it's like a repeat. Mm. So, once you've done about the first three or four things, it's just a repeat of the same as you go along. So, you, just you, know, when you have um, unidentified, you get back to your table, you've got unidentified beige battered, uh, or yeah. food. So it's always fish, and, and you think it's two or three of them, you're like, mm, that's rubbish, and then one of them's chicken, and oh, I like that again. And then you have to go out there and like just get 30 of them and 10 egg sandwiches. Um, and then you're like, oh, yeah, just uh, just shimmy back to your table without everyone looking at the fat boy of all his food. Do you, honestly, do you two finish your buffet food? I never, ever finish my plate. I think um, I finish the table. I just get bored of, it gets dry and hard. <laughs> the yeah, food. I, always fin- I have to finish it because I don't take a plate. I'm eating as I go. <laughs> it's like the Alan Partridge thing with the, the big 10-inch plate. Be a bit embarrassing if I put the crust on the table. <laughs> put them back on the plate. On the you've always got to do that little comedy thing with a scotch egg and a, so- a mini sausage, haven't you? Just for the Nigel next day. When you never oh. know if it's a mini scotch egg or one of those cheese filled ones, rank. Uh, cheese and onion. Minions. Hot fish and hot fish and chips on a cold winter. We can do that. Joey Hazelton, Lee and Dave have witnessed me sneak on the to the front of, a, of many a buffet. No one suspects the small guy. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. Use the small guy to go and get your food. Um, what's that amazing songs, isn't it? That nice. Uh, yeah. That's, in, that's incredible. Beautiful. That place. Mm. Too anyway, many football, there, again. football. That's great, isn't it? Football. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we're all coming back to football tomorrow. We have got Football Fitness Club, Chelmer Park at uh, eight till eight. nine um, on the Astro. Um, if you're interested and want to come to that, it is um, fitness with a ball at your feet. Uh, be about four drills, and then we'll have a um, bit of a kickabout afterwards. Um, unleash some built-up energy um from all the red balls and scotch eggs and then relax afterwards with a cigarello then afterwards we have nine till ten o'clock mates fc training this week it'll be pretty much the same thing four drills but the following weeks based on our performance at the week's game beforehand um we will um be brushing up on skills and about working as a team a bit more. Um, so that'd be a good opportunity to do that. That's nine till 10. Then on Sunday, we have got our first proper match back against Sands United Essex. We played them before, great, great lads. Absolutely love playing them. Um, we've got a few games against them coming up, so that'd be good. Um, did you say that Sunday? Saturday. 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 I'll just oh, read you, Sunday. Sorry. you said Sunday, yeah. Saturday, what time? Excuse me. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, meet at half ten. Sorry. Um, you let, you let me kick off. Just to be clear on that, don't turn yeah. up at half ten on Sunday because no one will no. be there. Well, I know I'll me... still be lurking around the park. Is it Melbourne? Yeah, uh, it's Melbourne this week. Yeah. Um, right. Unfortunately, we can't have any uh, spectators, but nobody can stop people walking through a park. 
Uh, can't stop him pissing uh, in the Bailey, uh, in the uh, going to bring the skills on the 10th. That's his first game back, I would guess. Um, for Team Danny for the win. No way. Yeah. I mean, Carl, you're not going to win, are you? No. Oh. I've got nothing to say to that. No comment. You're in my team. Dave, you're playing. You're a striker. I've got broken legs. You need to play, Dave. Everyone have, wants to see. Have some fizzy fish. Thumbs on. up, thumbs down if you want to see Dave play on the 10th. I don't know. What was the... What was the Lycra result? Was there any um, comments? People were just sick. Uh, Joe, oh. Joe Hazelton was sick. Um, <laughs> anyway, Andy, you saw me kick balls on uh, the other day when we was doing that photo shoot. <laughs> I was sitting with Andy's daughter. Andy was doing a photo shoot, taking some photos of people kicking a football. And uh, I was sitting with his daughter. I was like, oh, look, Daddy's like a mermaid over there. And she looked over and he was laying on his front with his hands like with his head like that with a phone in his hand with his legs kicked up in the air like a woman laying in the sea um a beautiful mermaid and then i went oh isn't that nice and she went he's so embarrassing why were you on the floor <laughs> was just, i was doing upskirt photos of uh peers yeah oh yeah crab, crab style, style. Uh, yeah we will be having crab football shortly that'll be coming back um oh, yeah Maybe it's the warm up we could do crab football. That's a great show. All, all I was going to do was wear lycra and do star jumps. And you're saying there's no spectators allowed, but how are they going to? They're just going to come in there hundreds to see that. Not come, just turn up in there hundreds. Daniel. <laughs> Can't wait to see right. they play. It's going to be good. Anyway, we need to wrap this thing up. So, yeah, you are kickballs. You have done as well. Good. Where's uh, Liam? Huh? Oh, Where's he, Liam? He's disappeared. Oh, he's on Tiskley as well. It, yeah, he's, uh, he's uh, young and uh, can't stay up late. So, <laughs> Ben's got a um, ridiculous comment when steps are in the tournament. That was about um, Team Danny for the win. Okay, so. <laughs> Uh, I was going to do an update on the end-to-end -end challenge, but I haven't added everything up, but I think it's still the same results. Where growth enders for the ninth week running are in the lead, followed by scrambled legs, which is led by Danny, uh, followed a bit by Twant FC, which is Andy and myself and some others, followed by steps, followed by pumpkin the ball. Everyone is absolutely smashing it, and we'll have some really good... Uh, we'll, we'll draw it to a close next week and we'll have some mad figures out there about what people have achieved. And this is brilliant. What they've done in this steps challenge um, during lockdown, that will be 10 weeks that they've continuously done. Um, yeah, done, kept this pace up of just doing these massive miles every day. It's mad. Um, I might look at doing something to continue this uh, after this, anyway, some some sort of steps challenge. Um, so Bailey, let the football do the talking, Ben. Oh, oh, oh. oh serious. And Christian Crozier has now been sick. On that note, um, right, enjoy football. If you want any information about coming to have a kick about over Football Fitness Club or uh, Mates FC training, have a look at our Mates FC Football Fitness Club Facebook page or social media or message any of us or put a message on here and uh right we'll see you all tomorrow or this actually, weekend hopefully. yeah it's actually here we're well excited so see as long as no one else sends any gold posts let's smash this thing let's thank you goal, hey, Dave. do a goal go on do a goal right in there <laughs>